The last breath of winter. White screen. The sound of a blizzard outside, whistling and moaning. Title card, The Last Breath of Winter. Fade to, exterior, cabin clearing, last day of autumn. Last night's rain rolls off fir trees, dripping faster and faster onto the roof of a small log cabin, a single sheltered stable at a chicken hutch. Life, big brown horse and chickens, woodland birds, begins to stir around the small clearing. The air is frosty with the first suggestions of winter. An axe slams down onto a block of wood, splitting it neatly and digging into the stump below where it remains stuck at an angle. Sparrows take flight at the sound. The axe comes down again and again with the same practiced motion. The withered pile of firewood beside the cabin grows some. Browned leaves snap off their branches and drift to the ground. The child chases a chicken around the yard while his huntsman father chops wood for the coming winter, clean-shaven and short-haired. A few stray snowflakes drift with the leaves. The child catches one on his nose. Looking up and along the forest pathway, the child sees more snowflakes tumbling, and at a distance, a hooded figure wearing a fox mask peering out from behind a tree watching. The child regards it with some curiosity, turns to his father, but seeing him absorbed in his work, turns back to the path. The figure in the fox mask is now markedly closer, a bushy tail flicking back and forth behind their long black coat. The child turns back to the father again, but slower, hesitant to pull his eyes from the fox figure. In its stable, the horse whinnies with agitation, and this grabs the attention of both father and child. The huntsman shrugs and smiles at his child. His child looks back to the forest path, empty save for the falling leaves and snow child coughs. Cut to interior log cabin, first night of winter. A low log fire crackles in the hearth beneath a cast iron pot, a faint glow washing out into the cabin and wind whistles outside. The huntsman and his wife snooze beneath bear skins in bed, the child off to one side, wrapped in a similar skin of his own. There's a sharp rapping at the door. The parents only stir and roll. The child awakens. He lies there listening to the wind. Skeletal shadows, fingers of the bare branches in the moonlight outside the small window play across his face. Another knocking at the door. The child sits up and stares across the cabin at the door. He glances at his parents, still fast asleep. Another knocking, this time fainter. The child gets up and cloaks himself in the bear skin, then pads across the wooden floor to the door. His hand hesitates, but no more knocking comes. He swings the door open to a flurry of snow, a dead chicken on the stoop, bloody and mangled. The wind howls around him, blowing snow into the cabin. The sound wakes his parents. They brush over and scoop him out of the cold as he begins to cough. The father peers out into the clearing, a light blanket of unmarred snow, no signs of tracks. The horse tosses with irritation in its stable. The huntsman kicks the chicken's corpse aside and shuts the door. Cut to exterior cabin clearing winter day. The snow is coming down harder, now a good few inches deep on the ground. A few muffled chesty coughs from the inside. The huntsman pushes the door open and starts his preparations, the beginnings of a beard coming in. He checks the latch on the hutch, kicks the snowed over corpse of the chicken to the edge of the clearing. He lays blankets over the horse, gathers up some more firewood, returns inside. Cut to interior log cabin, winter, day. The huntsman piles split timber beside the hearth and throws a few onto the fire while his wife stirs her broth in the pot. The child sits close to the heat, wrapped in his bearskin cloak. He's horribly pale and sickly, shuddering and coughing sporadically. His parents exchange a concerned look, his mother pressing the back of her hand to his forehead and frowning. She dips a finger in the broth and with it draws a rune of healing on his forehead, then ladles out three bowls. They sit in the glow of the fireplace, huddled around in silence. The mood is tense. The wind howls, the horse whinnies and tosses outside. The child's head snaps around anxiously. His mother holds him close to soothe him. The huntsman frowns, then crosses the room to a work table cluttered with loose pages and chicken feather quills. He sweeps aside an unfinished drawing of a horse emerging from a stream and grabs a large, partially hand-bound picture book. 
His wife moves the empty bowls on the floor and he places the book in the light, smiling at the child, hopefully. He opens the book. It's a collection of fables, all large illustrated plates on the right-hand pages, unreadable text on the left. Together they flick through the tales, but the child is distant, uninterested, drowsy as he coughs. His parents try to hold his focus, and he quickly falls unconscious. The mother casts the huntsman a long, imploring look. He knows what this means as he frowns severely, then stands, gathers some things quickly, and strides out of the cabin as his wife holds their shivering child in her arms by the fire. The rune on his forehead fades. The book lies open on an illustration of a fox figure by a stream in the snow. Exterior forest path, winter, day. The huntsman pulls his bare skin cloak tight around himself, adjusts the rifle slung over his shoulder. The snow is heavy, but he pushes through just fine. Nearby, somewhere, we hear a brook babbling, the sound of it eaten again by the wind. In and out of drifting snow, he trudges on and on. Fade to, exterior, green clearing, winter, day. Finally, he comes to a startlingly green clearing in the forest an enormous white oak at its center, its immense reach shielding the ground from the falling snow in a neat circle. The grass here is still lush and green. Here and there grow any number of mushroom varieties. Approaching a small patch of them close to the base of the oak, he gazes up at twisting strings of tiny carved runes, wreathing the trunk and kneels to pick the mushrooms. Fade to exterior green clearing summer day. High, joyous laughter cutting through the shrill static of cicadas. The huntsman is pulled by the hand. His young wife drags him into the clearing, bare feet on the grass, kicking up small insects that flit and dance on the late afternoon sunlight, filtering in streaks through the lush canopy overhead. The two of them tumble on top of each other at the base of the oak, some years younger than we've seen them, flushed and bright with the spark of young love. She rolls on top of him and kisses him deeply her auburn hair tumbling around her face, catching the light. She begins to undress him. He pulls her blouse over her head, and they make love, in the haze of the summer, as the cicadas sing all around them. They become lost to their passion, the young huntsman losing sense of time and space around him. He gazes up past his exhausted young bride atop him, and his look of content turns to consternation. The way the light hits the trunk of the oak here gives the illusion of a craggy old face leering down at them. The branches of the trees seem to wrap around and reach down to them. The roar of the cicadas grows uncomfortably loud. Cut to exterior, green clearing, winter, evening. The huntsman snaps awake, propped against the oak's trunk in fading light. His hands are still full of medicinal mushrooms, his rifle fallen off his shoulder and his cloak slipped loose. Something red trickles down the trunk, rolling over the huntsman's ear. He pulls away with a start and turns to see one of the runes, the same rune of healing his wife marked their child with, his bleeding dark sap. He gathers his things and hurries from the clearing in fear, tripping into the snow at the edge of the clearing. Fade to exterior forest path, winter, day. The storm is coming in worse, visibility is short. The huntsman struggles to keep his cloak and his rifle slung, and somewhere in the swirling white, he believes he can hear a faint high song in a girl's voice. He begins to cough, pushes on through the storm. Cut to interior log cabin, winter, evening. Mother cradles the child by the fire as the huntsman stumbles in the door. His wife quickly lowers her son to the ground and rushes to her husband, struggling to shut the door against the storm as he tips mushrooms from his pockets with shivering hands. She helps him close to the fire, then sweeps up the mushrooms and drops them into the pot. The broth bubbles as they sink, its hue shifting into a deep, earthy green. Cut to exterior cabin clearing, winter, morning. The snow has stopped. Harsh morning light falls on the clearing, a foot deep in snow. The horse shudders under its blankets. Most of the chickens are gone and those that remain are bunched together in the most sheltered corner of the hutch. The huntsman digs at a patch of ground a little way across from the cabin. His beard has lengthened some. Though each thud of the shovel stings against the frozen ground, he has already made good work on a small grave. The huntsman falls to his knees, coughing. Fade to interior, log cabin, winter, night. 
The fire crackles mildly. Its supply of split logs dwindled to almost nothing. The woman gazes hollowly over half-completed drawings at her table, pausing on an incomplete sketch of a white horse plunging into a stream, its mane twined around the rider, dragging him with it. The huntsman shivers in bed, empty soup bowls stacked nearby. His beard is noticeably longer, ragged. He coughs deeply, an awful, rattling thing. His wife rushes to check him, feeling his forehead snatching up an empty bowl. She rushes to the broth to find the pot empty. Her face lines with worry and sadness as she hurries to her husband and throws another bear skin over him. Cut to exterior cabin clearing winter night. She throws a saddlebag over the horse in the same motion. Swathed in furs and carrying her husband's rifle, she sets off in the night town. Exterior forest path winter night. The howl of wolves cuts through the low whistle of the wind. The woman glances around. The howls are closer, off to one side. She kicks the horse to go faster. Shadows move in the dark around her. The horse panics and leaves the path, startled by a sharp yip nearby. The woman tries to calm her steed without any luck. The horse crashes through thin ice over a stream and goes under, tossing the woman clear. Cut to exterior brook clearing summer and dusk. The young huntsman pulls his young wife down to him, both flushed and smiling as they hurry home in the orange evening light. Cicadas are giving way to crickets, the distant call of birds. They sit on a gentle slope overlooking a rolling brook that flattens into a very shallow reflecting pool, the lovers nuzzling together contentedly as the shadows lengthen around them. The huntsman leans in to say something to the woman, but she presses a finger to his lips and points excitedly at the brook. Just a dozen or so paces away, a great mottled gray-white brook horse emerges impossibly from the shallow water, its long shimmering mane streaming water beautifully. The huntsman is awed. He tries to stand and drag his wife towards the creature. She clasps his hand, and as he turns back to plead with her, she serves him a long and serious look of warning glances back to the brook horse strutting proudly along the shore, then to his wife again with that sternness in her eyes. She points to the reflecting pool, and he sees that the brook horse's reflection shows a rotting skeleton draped all over with mud and reeds, its eyes only deep pits of shadow. The huntsman recoils in horror. His wife calms him, and the two of them move off from the clearing. Fade to exterior forest path, winter, night. The woman nurses a broken arm and a head wound as she slogs through the snow. The long note of wolves howling is again faint and distant, twisting and contorting into some far-off song. There's no comfort to the woman. In fact, it drives her on even more determinedly than before. Her hand leaves a bloody smear on a tree as she passes. It looks like the face her husband saw in the oak. Cut to. Exterior, green clearing, winter, night. The woman limps into the clearing beneath the great white oak tree, droplets of blood falling here and there on the blades of grass as she falls to her knees by its base. She starts pulling up mushrooms and stuffing her pockets, prostrating herself before the tree in pleading prayer. The tree is silent and cold. She takes a bloodied thumb and smears it across one of the runes. The wind whips around her, but whatever response she was expecting does not come. A tear rolls down her cheek and freezes. She takes her mushrooms and leaves. Cut to interior, log cabin, winter, morning. The huntsman awakens, smearing broth and blood runes from his forehead and sitting up. His beard is immense, his hair long. The door is ajar, morning light falling on a trail of snow where his wife has crawled in and curled herself up by the cold hearth. There are markings in blood encircling her. She is turned away and clutching her broken arm. The huntsman tries to cough, and though his breath fogs in the chill, his chest is clear. He slips from bed to check on his wife. Cut to exterior, cabin clearing, winter, day. The ground is frozen as the huntsman tries to dig another, larger hole beside his child's grave. The chickens are frozen to the ground. Their horse is gone. The firewood pile is almost completely gone. Though his pallor is vastly improved, the huntsman's eyes are deeply sunken. He gives up on digging. Cut to 
Interior, log cabin, winter, night. The huntsman sits at the table, thumbing through the picture book. In the foreground, his wife lays on the bed, blue and staring. He places the book back on the table and draws the bearskin around himself. Shadowy tree fingers claw along falling moonlight and scratch monstrously at the cabin. He moves to the hearth and piles in the last of the split wood. Cut to exterior cabin clearing winter morning. Rifle and knapsack slung, the huntsman leaves the cabin, not bothering to close the door. He grabs the axe from its chopping stump and hooks it into his belt. As he leaves the clearing, the glow of the fire inside the cabin swells and builds as the flames begin to claim it. Cut to exterior brook clearing winter day. Malnourished and exhausted, the huntsman stops at the clearing in the woods by the reflecting pool and sits against a tree at the top of the slope. He runs his thumb against the edge of the axe's blade. It is dull, scratched, and worn. The brook here is flowing, no sign of ice on the shallow pool, young grass springing up at its edge, the first suggestion of a thaw dripping gently off branches. As the huntsman produces two small withered apples from his knapsack, and the brook horse emerges from the pool, steaming with heat in the chill air that falls as a gentle mist over the water's surface, the huntsman cannot catch its reflection from where he sits, and he pulls his bare skin a little tighter around himself. A familiar song drifts in and out, resolving crisply and cleanly as a hooded figure skirts the clearing, moving from tree to tree with its face hidden. The huntsman's hand moves to his axe, then to his rifle, but as the figure emerges into the clearing, he sees that it's in fact a young woman, long wisps of ginger hair framing a very pretty face. She spies him and giggles coyly, then crosses the clearing in his direction. She trails a hand through the brook horse's mane, never breaking eye contact with the huntsman. He holds her gaze as well, not trying to obviously take notice of the foxtail flicking back and forth behind her coat, smiling and fixed on her intense yellow eyes. He knows that she is a forest spirit, a huldra of legend like in his wife's book. The Huldra falls to her knees in the snow and showers him with sympathies and cooing kindnesses, brushing his face with her hands as he strains to keep up a warm facade for his exhaustion. Her tail kicks up snow. She pulls him to his feet with only minimal resistance. He's too tired to put up much of a fight. She pulls and beckons him down to the water's edge, fawning over him ceaselessly. She makes grand gestures, trying to persuade him to follow her down a twisting path away from the clearing. He gazes back at the forest path he'd been following. The brook horse nuzzles up against him, startling the huntsman. Even up close, the glamour is convincing, though its eyes are a ghostly, milky white. He produces the remaining apple from his pocket and feeds it to the creature as the huldra circles around to him again, ducking and hiding playfully behind the body of the horse. The huntsman takes advantage of a quick moment of distraction to glance at her reflection and confirms his fears. She is no maiden. Rather, her face is that of a rotting fox, teeming with maggots, the eyes eaten away, receding gums, and a blackened tongue. The same sweet laugh comes from behind the horrible face as he looks back to her. It's glamour fallen. The huntsman forces a smile and tries politely to ease himself towards the forest path. The huldra grows impatient, gesturing to the brook horse in offering, sapping his limited energy as he tries futilely to get away. Looking back to her face, he sees the maiden there again, but he will never forget the rotten fox. His hand falls from the hilt of the axe, and he turns to her. He makes a show of his exhaustion now, playing into her fawning, nodding and smiling and thanking her kindnesses. When she tries again to lead him to the twisted path, he relents. Her maiden's face, turned from him, twists a wicked smile of satisfaction. The huntsman clasps her hand. He makes a show of his exhaustion and gestures to the brook horse. Could he perhaps rest his bones and ride with her instead? The huldra is only too happy to oblige him. She's caught up in her perceived victory. She offers to help hoist him on the brook horse, obliviously munching on the grass. No, he motions. Perhaps you could get on first and pull me up. I'm awfully tired and weak, you see. She giggles. Of course, of course. She steps in close to kiss him gently, 
his eyes clenched so that he does not have to look at that face or into those hollow writhing sockets. Their lips touch. The huntsman draws breath, an icy whistle. Her, his skin pales with a hint of frost. The halter steps back, gives him one last coquettish look, and swings herself onto the brook horse. The huntsman holds his breath uncomfortably. Her look of satisfaction fades almost immediately. The brook horse rears back, its flesh falling away in ribbons, its bones twisting and biting into the halter's legs. The sweet girlish laughter rises to a piercing awful scream as the maiden glamour once more falls away. The brook horse plunges them both into the water and the sound is strangled off to the mild babbling of a quiet stream once again. The huntsman pulls the rifle to his lips and blows a frosty plume of breath down its barrel. A little pallor returns to his cheeks. He then raises the axe and splits the last of his breath across the blade with a clean, sharp whistle. The huntsman gazes down into the reflecting pool, and on its opposite bank, he sees his wife and child, hollow specters reflected in the water beneath the shadow of the great oak. His eyes never breaking from the illusion, he blows again quickly on the blade, the note pitching up beautifully. He runs a thumb along the blade and draws blood, droplets in the snow. The huntsman marks a familiar rune on the head of the axe. He slings his rifle, hooks the axe into his belt. The huntsman pulls his bear skin around himself and strides toward the forest path, leaving the green reflecting pool behind. The end.